Sonic logos, also known as SOGOs, they're short melodies that market brand identities. And now researchers from NTU have found that the frequencies of such SOGOs, that is, how high or low pitch they are, can impact the way that we perceive how healthy the food being advertised to us is. So let's try a little experiment. Now listen to this. And now this. Well, which sound would you associate with the healthier salad? Now, if you answered the higher pitch sound, well, you join 65% of those surveyed who also associated a higher pitched SOGO with healthier food products. Professor Gemma Calvert joins us live now to make sense of it all. She's Professor of Consumer Neuroscience at the Nanyang Business School in NTU. Good evening, Professor Calvert. What exactly is the science behind this and why did so many people in your study associate healthier food with that higher pitched sound? Well, we think this effect is due to a phenomenon called sound symbolism, which is the idea that certain sounds communicate meaning. And it turns out that in nature, um, high frequency sounds, for example, birdsong, tends to be associated with small light objects compared to low frequency sounds, for example, you know, obviously the, the call of an elephant. Um, and we, it turns out the brain learns these associations and generalizes them to other scenarios. In this case, I suppose high frequency is connoting lightness of food. So the hamburger looks much heavier, the salad is light. And that's why we think that high frequency sounds like this, um, people tend to associate with healthier food choices. Professor Calvert, you know, in the market, there are some well-known fast food commercials. They, they appear to have higher pitched uh, sort of uh, songs and jingles, but they're not particularly healthy food, though. In, indeed so. And so they're effectively communicating something that's incongruent with our actual experience of the food uh, products themselves. So this is relatively new in terms of you know, um, how we understand the, the brain and what we're finding out about the way that these multisensory illusions react. And I think companies can um, use this information to more accurately communicate what it is that the consumer is going to experience. We don't always mm. want to eat a salad necessarily, sometimes, we want more comfort or satisfying foods, which are high in salt, sugar, and fat. And um, in that case, maybe a lower frequency um, sonic logo would be more appropriate because it's what the brain uh, is expecting. Yes, we often crave the salt, fat, and the sugar. Uh, but for jingles, as an example, uh, they might be catchy in an advertisement, uh, they might be memorable as well, but is it even more important uh, than the perception that the food is healthy to sort of have uh, th that idea of uh, the catchiness of something? Is that what uh, the correlation is? No, I think that's very important. So brands are using these um, sound signatures, if you like, to communicate um, their brand or to bring it to top of mind in a non-visual way because our uh, visual um, environment's very uh, cluttered. So it's, it's a, a very useful technique. But what we are, our research has shown is that you can optimize that to communicate, not, not only just bring the brand to top of mind, but actually to communicate more accurately the benefits or the assets uh, of the brand or the product. So, Professor Calvert, let's talk a little bit more about your study because it, it linked uh, these stimulating visuals in commercials with consumer uh, perceptions that the food advertised is healthier. Is the effectiveness of marketing dependent on both pitch frequency uh, to influence our choices and the visuals as well? Well, both individually 
will have a similar effect. But what we've seen from research on how the brain combines information from the different senses is that when you have congruent sound and um, visual information together, you get what's called a super additive effect. In other words, two plus two now equals five. So you're really getting a large enhancement of the signal that you're trying to communicate. So it would be even more healthy if you get the visuals and the auditory that both communicate this high frequency information uh, in combination. So how far can we go with these SOGOs and, and the effectiveness or usefulness of them, uh, Professor Calvert, beyond uh, using it for the, to sort of talk about the healthiness of food or to influence the choices for that? What other areas can these SOGOs impact by way of consumer perception or, or even our preferences for something? Well, yes, actually, they have been shown to influence both preference and our emotional responses. So, for example, if you have um, slow moving music that calms us down, fast paced sonic logos um, have been shown to excite us. And in other circumstances, they can communicate uh, brand personality traits, too. So there's been some prior research on that. Professor Calvert, thank you very much for talking to us about uh, SOGOs and, and what they mean in the world of, uh, of companies having a unique selling proposition. Uh, Professor Gemma Calvert from NTU.